Since it's become a bit of a fad supplement lately, I'm going to talk a bit about C15 fatty acid pentadecylic acid. As a bonus, I'm also going to talk about the omega-7 acid palmitoleic acid. Yes, omega-7, not omega-6. This is a 7 shot 6 show, and I had it specially made. Why? I don't know. Nobody asked me it before. I'll bet. I get an inordinate amount of people in the comments whose only goal is to try to turn things to a so-called healthy plant-based whole food diet. In other words, they have an agenda. And that may be why some of the people were seemingly misunderstanding what I said about the saturated fat palmitic acid a few videos back. To clarify, actually eating palmitic acid is not a big problem for the body. In fact, much of it will simply go right through the digestive tract, unlike carbohydrates, which are all going to be processed essentially. Especially if your insulin levels are low and the gut microbiome is healthy, you're probably going to reject more of it than you actually take in. The problem comes in when it is made in the liver from carbohydrates, then it is either directly put into the liver as liver fat or it enters the bloodstream as triglycerides. This is very unhealthy because this is where the visceral fat in your body comes from and that's what's associated with cancer and heart disease and so on, especially in liver fat, which is the worst place to have fat. Since the bloodstream can only contain a pittance of glucose at a time, this is the real fate of most of the carbohydrates you eat. Your body can easily deal with small amounts, especially if your liver glycogen is low, but a high carb diet is promoted by the American Diabetes Pyramid and the Canadian Donut Rainbow just isn't something your body's designed to deal with. <laughs> Lately, I've been seeing videos talking about Gen Z and how they look old. It's not something I'd consider too much, but I have noticed that people today just look so unhealthy. And now that I think about it, many of the people who are young by their age sort of have this young old look to them. They don't have wrinkles, but they just have such dull skin and they just seem unhealthy. At schools now, they give free breakfast and lunch. If it were truly healthy food like eggs and fatty meat, that would be a good thing. Especially if the government subsidized the local farms to grow it in the areas around the school. But what they really give them is processed food full of seed oils. That is poison. I think this is the main culprit because aside from oxidized fats becoming liver fat and the deuterium in veg oil, linoleic acid used in cell membranes is going to be unstable and it will let things into the cell that just shouldn't be there. You also won't get enough glycine in the modern diet, even if you avoid processed food. And on a processed food diet, you hardly get any at all. Saturated fats are very stable, especially pentadecylic acid, or C15 as it's also called. In fact, this is probably the main benefit of pentadecylic acid. It is very stable and strong, and it lends these attributes to the cell membrane. You also need to have at least 0.2% of the cell membrane made of pentadecylic acid if it's going to be strong enough to work properly. You also probably get a little more benefit in this regard by going a bit higher, but it's not exactly certain how high you need to go. In fact, if you want your cell membranes to function properly, then saturated fats must be the main fatty acids they're constructed with. They also need plenty of cholesterol, and it's vitally important that this is animal cholesterol and not plant sterols. And the body can mistake these plant sterols for cholesterol. Sterols are not flexible, and they lead to brittle cells that break and become easily destroyed. That's not good, especially in neurons and other hard-to-replace cells, such as cardiac muscle. Lowering cholesterol is often promoted as a benefit of consuming plants and veg oil, but it's seldom elaborated upon just how this occurs. The reason they lower cholesterol is usually because they're full of plant sterols, which the body has trouble distinguishing from real cholesterol. 
This makes the liver start sucking cholesterol out of the bloodstream and trying to get rid of it. This also gets rid of the good cholesterol as well as the bad cholesterol, but it never gets all of the bad cholesterol out of there. And some of it will always remain and become part of your cell membranes and this is going to cause problems. This is a big problem when these cells are your red blood cells or their cells in your heart, brain, or your liver. And it's not good for your skin quality when your skin cells have unhealthy cell membranes either. If these crunchy plant-based sterols are used to make red blood cells, this can lead to clots. And whatever cells they are, it will probably lead to an early death of the cell. Do you know that our red blood cells Red blood cells are discoid in shape. In other words, they are like this. Um, they are not spherical. They are sort of discoidal shape, which is that particular shape. And one of the reasons for that discoidal shape is because there is cholesterol in the membrane of the red blood cells. Now, if you replace the cholesterol with phytosterol, so we will get to that as to why phytosterol is important, but I'm just laying the foundations for it. If you replace the cholesterol in our red blood cell membranes with phytosterol, they are no longer deformable. When they are deformable and normal, they will squeeze through the small capillaries, the small blood vessels, without actually being affected and be without breaking down. Whereas when you cholesterol deplete them and add phytosterol to that, they can no longer squeeze, they become rigid. These are not cholesterol deposition, but these are phytosterol depositions. So they get xanthomas. Their eyes have little coverings out here. These are called xanthelesma. The uh, cornea gets a whitish color, which is called arcus senilis. The red blood cells get cholesterol in their membranes. What happens to them? They get rigid. They get rigid. They break up. They clump together. When they do that, is it going to increase your risks of stroke? Yes, it is. Is it going to increase your risks of heart disease? Yes. Platelets are another group of blood cells that regulate coagulation. The platelets decrease in number because their membrane is fragile and you get bleeding strokes. Can you get diabetes from having high amounts of plant cholesterol in your blood? Yes, because your cell membrane, instead of having animal cholesterol, now has plant cholesterol in it, and the cell membrane is not as fluid. So this is a study in which they have looked at the vascular effects of a diet that is supplemented with plant sterols, because at one point, medical profession was saying, take plant sterols, they're benign, you will reduce the absorption of cholesterol and you will reduce your LDL by about 10 to 15%. So these are a group of uh, researchers who evaluated that in rats. And what it is measuring out here is in response to a stimulus, if your blood vessel is like this, when you give a certain stimulus, the blood vessel vasodilates, it increases in size. So, this group of animals got phytosterol, plant sterol, uh, in excess. This group were on a normal chow, and you can see that the people who were on a normal chow, their vessels vasodilated, whereas the vessels of the animals that were fed plant sterols, they remained small. Now, they created a stroke in these animals. Mm. Out here are normal chow. You cannot see it well, but the size of the stroke is much smaller than the size of the stroke in the animals that were given phytosterols. And this is the volume of the stroke. The volume of the stroke was much greater in the group of animals that were given phytosterols. Now, in that same study, they had 82 patients who needed their heart valve replaced. So they had access to their heart valve. So they took out the heart valve, and of the 82 patients, they had information as to how much of them were taking margarine that had two grams of phytosterol added to it on a regular basis. Some of them were taking it regular, some of them were not taking it, some of them were taking it more regularly. So, the people who are not using, this is the amount of plant sterols in their blood. 
less. Irregular, there was a little bit more. Irregular, it was much higher. Now this is the same thing, but it's there in the tissues of the heart valve. Okay, so you're taking out the tissue of the heart valve and you're checking and seeing how much plant sterol is in those valves. And what they found is that the amount of plant sterols in the valves was greater depending on how much phytosterol these patients were consuming. Regular use higher, middle use less, and no use less. Now, another group of researchers wanted to see that vegetable oils are very high in phytosterols. Which vegetable oil is the highest in, in phytosterol? Corn, corn. corn oil. Just get exactly. Uh, Another one, soybean oil. Uh, does olive oil have phytosterol? Yeah. Good question, right? Yes, it does. Does coconut oil have phytosterol? So what they did was that they said, these researchers said, that the Canadians eat too much damn animal fat. <laughs> so we're gonna take a Canadian diet which is high in animal fat and feed it to these rats. And then to the other group of rats, we're gonna give them olive oil or corn oil and see which rat dies first. <laughs> So which rat do you think died first? The one that was fed corn oil and olive oil or the one that was fed animal fat like the Canadian fat mimicking diet? Mm. So this is the Canadian fat mimicking diet. Animals survived much longer. Wow. The animals on the corn oil, olive oil died much quicker. Fish oil gets promoted a lot by various influencers. I don't think it's bad per se, but you should keep in mind that extremely high amounts of fish oil are also bad because of their effects on the cell membranes. You need a certain amount to make healthy cell membranes, especially when it comes to the brain and the myelin sheath. But if you have too much in your cell membranes, it can actually lead to atrial fibrillation. So don't think that fish oil is a magic heart disease cure, and you shouldn't take it for heart disease at all. That's not the reason for it. You should be taking it to make sure you're not deficient, which could cause problems in your cell membranes and especially when it comes to the brain. I sometimes take cod liver oil, mainly for the vitamin D, but it also helps in this regard. Just keep in mind the main reason we supplement nutrients is deficiency, which is common in a modern diet. Fish oil is probably going to be largely oxidized by the time it gets to you, so a lot of it may become liver fat, but you still have to have a certain amount to be healthy, so I'd rather have it in oxidized form than to be deficient. Keep in mind that the best thing to do is have some seafood like sardines or mackerel, eat eggs and fatty meat, and then you should have a reasonable amount in your diet even if the levels many claim ideal aren't reached. Then if you supplement a small amount on top of that, that should be more than enough to make sure you're healthy. Coming back to pentadecilic acid, the main benefit I can see and perhaps the only real benefit is the benefit that it provides for the cell membrane. There's also some associational data which shows that people in long-lived areas like Sardinia have more of it in their bloodstream, but the amounts are so insignificant that I would be cautious in claiming a large amount would have health benefits. In fact, I'm sure it would cause health problems as there are inborn conditions that lead to the production of pentadecilic acid in the body and they cause brain damage. Ironically, some have promoted it as healthy because it breaks down to propionic acid, but propionic acid is very harmful to the body and especially the brain. It requires folate to process and therefore depletes folate. And this is probably part of the reason that folate systems are messed up in people with autism and with related mental illnesses. But the answer here is to stop eating processed food like breads, which are going to produce a lot of propionate. The real reason that large amounts of pentadecilic acid cause brain damage is that when burned in the body, it creates a lot of propionate. And that's shown to cause autism-like symptoms in animal experiments and even brain damage. Keep in mind that Sardinians would be getting this pentadecilic acid mostly from dairy. And it is not present in overwhelmingly large amounts. There is a lesson to take here from the associational data. It's probably that dairy is a very healthy food and that everyone should partake. Just be sure it's full fat dairy and not low fat cheese and milk. 
There's also some experimental data and it is some mixed results. I wouldn't take it too seriously because the measurements they used wouldn't show the benefits very easily. But again, with the levels used, I would say the best interpretation is that if you have a decent amount of dairy in the diet, you're probably already topped off and taking more won't help much, or it may even be harmful. Ultimately, is this stuff worth supplementing? I'd say for most people that it's not. However, if you're a vegan, then this is yet another thing you absolutely have to supplement if you want to be healthy. I believe they make this stuff in a lab from palm oil, so it could technically be called a vegan supplement. But I'd urge people to have some fresh dairy and eggs instead, and to make it raw if possible. I used to put 18 raw egg yolks in with some milk and ice cream and glycine, just to make it a bit sweeter, mix it up and down it and you do that for a post-workout meal. I could feel the muscle piling on when I did this. I only stopped when the price of good eggs went totally insane overnight, and it went from a $2 post-workout meal to a $10 post-workout meal. You can skip the egg whites. They're mostly full of trash amino acids. They also taste really nasty when they're raw and they're harder to digest than the raw egg yolks. So if you take a bunch of whole raw eggs, they're probably gonna come out the same way that they went in. I used to just fry those up with a few whole eggs and give them to my dogs and they really loved it. And that's probably the best thing you can do with it. The whites is just fry them and then either use them as dog food or eat them yourself. Could anyone else be deficient? If you have a terrible diet, like the typical low fat chicken and rice bodybuilder diet, and you could also be deficient, but in that case, I just urge you to change the diet. That diet came about in the 70s for people on PEDs because they were very afraid of saturated fat. And it's not any better for building muscle. In fact, it's much worse. And the old school bodybuilding diet was actually pretty much hamburger and steak and eggs. Rinse and repeat. If you eat lots of beef, you probably also have enough even if you don't take dairy. But that is more of a borderline case and that may be the case that you could get a little benefit from supplementing a little. But even if you're on the carnivore diet, I would say just take a little dairy once in a while. It's not going to kill you even though some people seem to think it will for some reason. So I guess that's about all there is to pentadecilic acid. It's becoming a popular fad topic and it is a very important element of the diet, but supplementing it in the diet is probably not necessary for most people and could even be harmful if you took enough. The only people who will really see much benefit from this are the ones who are selling it. Four pounds of grease, that comes to 63 cents. Woohoo! But wait, there's more. I also promised to talk about another less trendy but more interesting fatty acid, an omega-7 fatty acid. Yes, omega-7, not omega-6, and it's called palmitoleic acid, not to be confused with palmitic acid. Since pentadecilic acid is a bit of a letdown, I thought I'd throw this bit in as a bonus. Palmitoleic acid is also present in dairy in small amounts, but probably not enough to make any difference to your health as your body can make it in small amounts already. When supplementing palmitoleic acid, increased energy production in mitochondria is noted. It has also been shown in vitro to stop the apoptosis of pancreas cells exposed to glucose. Palmitoleic acid is also found in olive oil and may be part of the reason that extra virgin olive oil seems to have health benefits. Though I would assume the main reason is that oleic acid has anti-inflammatory properties and that this is the main component of extra virgin olive oil. It does have some harmful linoleic acid in it, but so does most of the meat you can buy in the store today. Palmitoleic acid and oleic acid are both very anti-inflammatory, so they should be considered healthy fats. I made a mistake when I originally did this video due to rushing out videos while I have access to the computer so that I don't fall behind. I said it lowers the enzyme SCD1. This isn't true and it actually raises SCD1, which is needed in the body to make fats like oleic acid and palmitoleic acid. But at high levels, it can drive obesity and impede fat burning. 
and it's associated with cancer. And while palmitoleic acid is also associated with cancer, it's not going to cause cancer and it may even help fight it because it's very anti-inflammatory. It's just a consequence of the very high SCD1 levels which can cause metabolic problems and which I think the cancer can actually cause as well. However, as with the C15 fatty acids, the amounts you would take as a supplement or in the diet are very small, so it really shouldn't matter as far as SCD1 goes. And as I said, you absolutely have to have some of these in the body. Taking very large amounts would drive this enzyme up and cause health problems, but the real problem with large amounts of these fats would be the uneven number of carbons, and that makes them hard on the body when you actually burn them as fuel, and that consumes folate and other vitamins, and it's going to cause a lot of issues. Your body requires some of these odd carbon fats because it needs them for the cell membranes and for moisturizing the skin and your gut and for other parts of the body. But large amounts in the diet would be very bad news. So I wouldn't worry about this unless you have dry eye, for example, and then you might consider taking some palmitoleic acid or getting more dairy in the diet or trying to supplement in another way. And it would also be something that's very good to use on your skin or on your scalp. Macadamia oil and sea buckthorn berry oil are the sources that are the highest in palmitoleic acid. Macadamia oil is pretty expensive though. However, sea buckthorn berries have many benefits and it is worth pondering whether some of them are due to the palmitoleic acid. They are particularly good for treating dry eye symptoms. And for that reason, I've considered doing a video on supplementing sea buckthorn berries. It could be that the palmitoleic acid content has this effect, as it is a very moisturizing molecule. It's also worth noting that the palmitoleic acid in sea buckthorn is in the berry itself and not in the seed, so supplements in powder form should also provide this benefit. Palmitoleic acid is used in a lot of cosmetics and lotions because it's just so moisturizing. It should also help the gut lining for this reason, and that's yet another reason to take full fat dairy for its health benefits, especially in what comes to protecting the lining of your gut. A lot of people can have an allergic reaction to dairy. That's mainly because they're taking a lot of low fat dairy instead of taking full fat dairy as they should. I don't generally recommend taking oils as dietary supplements, though I do enjoy some extra virgin olive oil from time to time, but it may be worth using palmitoleic acid containing oils on your skin and scalp, such as macadamia oil and sea buckthorn oil. I have pondered adding sea buckthorn berry to my supplement list for a long while now, and after researching palmitoleic acid, I've now placed it at the top of the list. I don't think most people need to supplement the saturated fat C15 pentacillic acid, and that it could be harmful if you took larger doses of it. But it is interesting to see what an important role it plays in cell membranes, and it is something that we do need in small quantities in the body. I would think it makes much more sense for most people to get it from the diet, and it seems anyone who has dairy regularly should have more than enough already. If you are a muscle meat only carnivore, then adding dairy once in a while might be a good idea. But unless you're vegan or vegetarian, it probably doesn't make much sense to be supplementing it. On the other hand, supplementing the omega-7 fat palmitoleic acid seems much more promising when it comes to health benefits. It increases insulin sensitivity and fat burning in the liver. I would not try to take this as a refined oil, but instead it can be found in sea buckthorn berry supplements. And the palmitoleic acid is in the berry itself, not in the seed. I've considered taking it for some time, and I've recently decided to add it to my supplement stack after learning about all of this. Since both of these nutrients are available in dairy, we have yet more evidence that dairy is a very important part of the diet. That about wraps it up for today, and it's time for me to get back to my usual everyday activities. So you risked your life to try to stop them? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! What do you think you're doing? Don't worry, I've got him under control. Get him off my 